Welcome to another episode of the brand called You, a video and podcast show that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Today, it is my privilege to welcome a classmate of mine, a very, very successful professional, and a very successful entrepreneur from Dubai, K. Raja Ram, to the show. Raja, welcome to the show. Thanks, Aju. Thanks for having me. Raja is uh, an engineer. He and I are both from Jamnalal Bajaj. He is he spent his whole life in automobiles. He's currently the CEO of Al Nabuda Automobiles LLC, which is the world's largest Porsche dealer. Raja, tell me, what would you say are three key milestones in your life or your career? I think a lot in life depends on luck, also. Correct. It's all good to be competent and all that, you know, the jazz that the teachers in business school. Yeah. There's a huge element of luck. Correct. Being at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Correct. That counts for a heck of a lot. Yeah. Like when I went to Muscat first, there was no electricity, no water. Really? The seat, the streets of that city were paved with gold mm. because everything in the city needed. Hmm. Likewise, when I moved to Dubai, Dubai was just starting off on its boom. Correct. So the timing in all cases was right. So I think that is a very, very important essence hmm. of success. Correct. Okay. Then after that comes the competence and the way you look at things and how you do things. Yeah. But to a large extent, I would say that is one of the stepping stones of success. Wonderful. So let's talk about cars. I mean, that's a world that you have spent a lifetime in. Lifetime, forty years. Absolutely. Tell me, what is it about cars that gets the hormone levels up? See, cars are iconic things, you know, and mm. uh, it's not that a, a guy just goes and buys a car. Mm. A car is an extension of his personality. Okay, he is telling the world who he is, what he is, by the car he drives, right. and then it becomes an emotion. Mm. and that's what drives the big brands like the ferraris the maseratis the porsches mm. because they're all icons you know and this is why children put their photographs in their rooms mm. you know from the time they are 5 years old the dream is oh i must have a porsche yeah so that's but the car apart from just being a method of taking you from place a to place b mm. is very very emotive i can imagine So you know you have built Porsche from 365 cars a year to 5,000 and growing. Tell me, you know, you're a marketing person, um, and I remember you from business school. You were one of the brighter marketing people with a great earthy kind of sense. I don't of, want to disagree with you on that, but that that apart. What I'm what I'm coming to <laughs> is that with all your background of marketing, what goes into building a car brand? Okay, simply, simply this. Ashu, huh. when somebody comes to you and puts down two hundred thousand dollars to buy a product, correct? He wants service. Mm. There are no compromises on that at all. Correct. You can't even drop one centimeter in that mm. because once the guy has put down that big ticket item, mm. he's not going to listen to excuses. Mm. And this is where we have succeeded tremendously. and i'm very happy to say that 95% of our customers are return customers wow which turn which is a lot to say because they come back and say look these guys have looked after me so uh, i th- and apart from that porsche is an iconic brand correct you know uh, if i and i must also say it does sell itself mm-hmm. the reputation sells itself mm-hmm. but if you don't back it up with fabulous after sale service mm-hmm. and looking after the customer the brand will fail either way and when you say service one is the service you give when he before he puts down his money yeah the second is after sales isn't it yeah so very you, very important after sales is very important correct this is to make sure the car is on the road mm. 24 hours a day mm. i mean there's no point in the car sales car spending its time in my workshop mm. of no good to anybody very true and you know the united arab emirates is one of the most open markets for automobiles yeah i mean every time i've been there i see every possible brand there on my road alone every single dealer is there correct what is it that you raja did differently for al nabuda 
which made you such a big success looking after our customers okay like i told you that is when we get the repeat customers uh looking after them treating them like they're genuine genuine partners of ours okay and that has really really paid us in the long run hmm. and of course you know you must have nice facilities because nobody wants to come to a shabby tin shack to buy a $200,000 car. Mm. Nobody wants to go into a lousy workshop with oil lying all over the floor to service a $200,000 car. Right. All that must be top notch. Correct. Once the hardware is there, the software kicks in then. And what about your uh, you know comment on the world's largest showroom or after sales facility that you have built in Dubai? I have three brands audi volkswagen and porsche okay as you know the volkswagen group owns all of this oh i didn't know that okay yeah volkswagen owns audi porsche and 11 other brands which is seat skoda and down the line whatever it is hmm. the most important so we have the world's largest showroom in audi mm -hmm. we have the world's largest workshop in volkswagen okay. and we have the world's largest showroom in porsche wow Our showroom is four floors mm. to sell Porsches. Wow. Now, that comes out of volume, uh, Ashu. You know, you can't expect somebody in India who sells 10 cars to have a four floor showroom. It, you know, the, the numbers don't stack up. But once you have the volume and you have the revenue, yes, you know. But like I said, you have to deliver to the customer the hardware also. And how I big is the customer, UAE market? Sorry? How big is the UAE market in, in terms of number of cars sold? We are currently running at about two, three hundred thousand, but you know the pandemic has yeah. slammed it really down. But mm. we are currently running at about two, three hundred thousand. Okay. And then you know, since you've got three different brands, oh. do you have completely different teams looking after the three brands from a oh, marketing perspective? Different. They're isolated. Each of them has its own general manager, mm -hmm. its own team, its own workshop, its own showrooms. Everything is separate. And therefore, diverting to say people, when you say each of them has a general manager, yeah. when you hire a CEO for each of your businesses, yeah. what do you look for? Honesty, integrity. Okay. And he must have love for the brand. Mm. You know, if, you, if you're not in love with the brand, you can't sell it. Correct. And once it's there, then it um, um, sells itself. And, you know, if you look at now the digital e ecosystem that is changing the entire world of retail, yeah. are you beginning to see any impact on uh, for cars as well? Yes, they are. But then you see, again, the car is a different thing altogether. Yes, people come. We have an uh, internet thing where you can go book your car, book a test drive. But eventually, you got to put your ass on the seat. Mm. You've got to drive the car yourself. Correct. You know, this is not like buying a bottle of perfume. Correct. I mean, the car, you have to drive it, you have to feel it, you have to love it. Mm. And for that, you they, people have to be driven into the showroom. Mm. Mm. You know, unlike buying any other product, which, you know, okay, like a television set. Sure. It's 75 inches, that's it. You know, nothing else you can do with it. Correct. So, you know, when, you, when I look at car brands over the years... A lot of car brands are iconic, but they die. Yeah. And yet there are some yeah. which continue to keep reinventing themselves and keep staying relevant irrespective of the generation. Yeah. What makes a car brand last for a long time? I mean, a Mercedes which always seems to be young. Yeah. A Porsche always seems to be young. Yet American brands seem to be dying out. It yeah. can't just be same, is it? Let me tell you, it's the engineering that's gone into the car. Okay. And this is where the Germans have scored over the rest of the world by miles. Mm -hmm. Today, the German cars have, have a reputation of having the best engineering in them. Mm -hmm. Be it Audi, be it BMW, be it Porsche, be it uh, Volkswagen, anything. Mm -hmm. But the engineering, it's top notch. Mm -hmm. And that is where the Americans failed. Okay. The Americans decided they'll mass produce cars. Mm. That works for a certain amount of time, mm. but that neither builds loyalty 
nor build the liability mm-hmm. which the Germans put into their cars. Okay. Okay. And that is the essential difference. Okay. And uh, I guess you know the manufacturers are continuously redesigning, retesting, relaunching uh, their brands, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And you have to stay one step ahead of the game every time. Mm-hmm. Like right now, the great thing, the new kid on the block is electric cars. I was just coming to that. Tesla started the game. Mm-hmm. Now everybody has stepped in. And well, uh, I have my views on electric cars, mm-hmm. which may not be what the world thinks it is. What are your but views? Simply, Ashu, I have yet to find out mm-hmm. what is the carbon that we are saving mm-hmm. between generating one kilowatt of electricity using hydrocarbons mm-hmm. and putting in a clean car. Now, there's only one country in the world which generates 100% of its electricity clean. Mm-hmm. That is either solar or water, whatever it is. That is Holland. Okay. I can understand Holland coming and saying, let's have electric cars, we are carbon free. Mm-hmm. But if the rest of the world is going to burn hydrocarbons to generate electricity, mm-hmm. and this electricity is what goes into the car, mm-hmm. I don't see that, okay, there might be a small saving in the footprint, but I don't see a substantial saving. And the other thing is, the infrastructure that you have to now rebuild, mm. the grid lines, the lines that you have to lay, these are expensive stuff because all these electric lines oh. and all were put in, you know, hundreds of years ago, 70 years ago, 60 years ago. Right. You may be able to stand this load. I, I think there's a lot of thinking that has to, and then the other thing that they started off on is autonomous cars. Mm. The legislation that you require for autonomous cars mm. is something tremendous. I mean, as an insurer, who is responsible right. if the car has an accident? Right. So, you know, uh, it's good to jump on the bandwagon and say it's something new, it's something great, but I don't think it's been well thought of. Mm. So, you know, if you look at automobiles, two new things that are coming in, and you've just spoken over both of them. One is uh, the the uh, electric cars and the other is the driver free cars. Yeah. And you think that most countries are still not yet uh, ready in terms of the carbon footprint of each of these cars. I would there are well they are now laying the infrastructure, mm. but still again you know uh, how much can they lay and how quickly can they lay it? Right. And the other thing is now the waste of the batteries mm. disposing of that is another big issue. Mm. And, uh, well, uh, let's see how the world copes with it in the future. That's true. I agree with you. So one more question on cars before I move to your other entrepreneurial venture. Yeah. This is the age of the millennials. You know, your your, your son, my children, my son, yeah. all are millennials. And obviously, they are very attracted to automobiles. Yeah. What, in your opinion, is happening to the automobile business because of the millennials and the Gen Zs? Okay, let me tell you, the new setup, the millennials don't want to own. Okay. Okay. They don't want hindrances. Okay. They want to go rent. That is why you have this plethora of rental companies. That is why you have a plethora of the U- Ubers and things like that. It's so easy. Like my son says, Dad, pick up the phone, call a Uber and he takes you where you want. Now, why the hell would I buy a car, get to the insurance and, you know, all the malarkey of ownership? The kids nowadays, they don't want hang-ups. Mm. They just want the easy way out. And that is changing the way that we sell cars also. So a great number of our cars are also going to companies like Uber mm-hmm. and uh, Kareem and things like that. And now we also have, uh, you have these car slots mm-hmm. where you can rent a car for an hour or, or two. Mm-hmm. So things are changing tremendously. And I think the ownership pattern is going to change a lot in the years to come. And will that change uh, the way the car companies have to do their business? Absolutely, they will. Absolutely, they will. And they're also gearing up for it. That is why, you know, they are looking at various methods Mm. of, you know, uh, tackling this issue. So from an individual customer, you're now, the focus is now shifting to these companies which buy cars to rent out or lease out to people. So, Rani, let's move to the next part of uh, our conversation, which is about your entrepreneurial venture, the Aloft Hotel. Yeah. 
you mentioned that your son runs the aloft hotel yeah uh, my first and basic question is that a lifetime in cars why in why tourism why don't you do something in cars okay very simple reason my son has always loved hospitality okay he is a graduate from cornell mm-hmm. which is a prob- probably the finest hospitality school in the world and when he came back in and, and dubai what is dubai dubai is tourism and hospitality right so that was just a natural progression into that mm-hmm. and we had this opportunity near the new airport and the uh, hotel is up and running now so okay the pandemic is something nobody even thought of Absolutely. but still there are challenges so tell me about the hotel how big is it and uh, we have about uh, 200 rooms okay. it's a four star hotel it's uh, not a five star one of the luxury things yeah. it's more a business person hotel and it's just outside the new airport that dubai is building at dubai world center okay. and uh, that's where we are now okay so you know my question next question to you is on startups i mean you know the aloft is a startup and i'm sure yeah like me you must have invested in many many startups yeah. some of them worked some probably did not as you look back and as you look at your own venture what in your opinion are some of the basic mistakes a lot of startup entrepreneurs make they overextend themselves ashu in terms of money in terms of money okay. you only grow as much as you have in your own bank to pay mm. the day you step over that line you're doomed because something like a pandemic is something you never thought would hit you correct and then it happens you're finished mm. so you must make sure that you have the internal resources to withstand what you can do okay. if you don't don't touch the venture and do not ever get into this impression that ah let me go borrow the money now the revenues will increase in the future that is not what is going to happen in this world it does not happen correct you make sure the revenues are coming in first before you go commit to a bigger loan hmm. that is true and and taking a loan is always a challenge you it know? is a challenge and now the thing is money is worth nothing people are throwing money at you correct and that's you know making people greedy hmm. but you have to pay it back sometime correct and that's when the crunch comes Correct. now who are the people who are suffering in the pandemic the people who are suffering in the pandemic today are people who have huge borrowing on their balance sheet very true they have to service the loan they have to repay the loan and that is creating a problem hmm very true but if you are carrying no debt yeah. okay you take the loss as an entrepreneur and you sit back and wait very true very but at true. least nobody is putting a gun to your head saying return my money correct well said So I've got time for a few questions for you personally now. Sure. My first question is a career of 40 plus years what does success mean to you? Success to me I'm happy it has given me the ability to travel. Mm-hmm. It's given me the ability to be with my grandchildren and you know uh, uh, because we all live in the same city and i have been able to have everybody here mm. and success to me has also been that our success has not been just confined to what we have done but we are in the world we have set up a name correct now when you say you are the largest porsche dealer in the world it counts for something because uh, you know each car you sell is a quarter million dollars mm. you know and uh, we are happy that what we have done in uh, terms of uh, is not only affecting the country and where we live in but is also taking our name worldwide and again next question is that uh, you know we are of similar vintage yeah and yet you know we keep going with more and more interesting things that we do where do you draw your inspiration from inspiration comes in from various sources you know when you travel you look around you know you learn from the people around you mm. and also we urge and your own thing to do something different mm. you know when you say you have built the world's largest showroom it's a legacy that you are leaving behind correct so when rajaram dies tomorrow mm. when people pass by they'll say hey he built it mm. you know 
and you draw inspiration from what you can do and what legacy you can leave behind for the future. Very good. Well said. Well said. My next question is that you know, if you, Raja, were a role model to millions of children who for closely followed your life choices, what is the one thing you would change in yourself? Look after your health. Okay. When you're young, it's very easy to burn the candle at both ends. Mm. Don't do it. Mm. We all did it, and we're paying the price for it today. Okay. Okay. And uh, you know, it, it, it's very easy to say, "Hey, you know, today everything is fine. You know, you can go through half a bottle of whiskey in the night. You know, you're 30 years old. Doesn't matter." But when you start hitting 55 and 60, all those half bottles start showing on you. So true. So true. That's two experienced people talking. Yeah. My next question is that how have you changed over the years? You know, I was a firebrand. I know. I that still is one part of it. I have changed quite a bit. Okay. I've mellowed down over the years. Uh -huh. But being a firebrand when I was young helped. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it uh, always helped to kick a few asses. You right. know? Because when I came and took over this company, we were down and out. Uh -huh. You know, everybody had his head down. They were all waiting for the company to close down. They didn't know whether tomorrow the company doors would open, whether we had money to pay salaries. And you really had to, you know, kick them into action. Mm -hmm. That helped at that time. But now as time goes on, you become mellow. You know, you take a seat. I don't actively run the company on a day-to-day -day basis. My general managers do it. But uh, I do all the, you know, the looking into the future mm. on what we can, how we can expand, what we can do. And that is my role now. Okay. I, I don't get into the nitty gritty of how many cars to order, you know, what to do. All those days are gone. Sure. I agree with you. And my last question to you. Mm. And therefore, I come back to the pandemic. How are you rethinking your life in the new world order? Oh, it's, I, I think we all have to rethink the way we are going to do things. Because even let us say that there is a vaccine and everything goes back to normal. Mm. I think a lot of people are going to sit back and say, hey, look, all this money that we were spending in the past, mm. in these huge offices and things like that, is, was it really necessary? Right. Because we were perfectly fine when we were locked up at home. Everything went on. Right. We were talking on uh, Zoom with you, you know, we got our business done. So why throw all this money? Mm. I think there is where a sea change is going to come in the way we all do business. I agree. And like you said, all this computerization and all the technology and the analytics that's coming in, mm. you, you can do it on the net now. Correct. The only thing that will come is in the physical buying of the car, people will still come to us. But most other products, I think, can be done very differently than what is happening now. Right. The car is the only thing which is different because, A, you have to take possession of the car. You have to drive the car. It's a different thing. Correct. You know, you don't take a TV for a test drive. Right. <laughs> very true. Very true. Raja, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I wish you good health, as you said. Yeah. And, and, of course, success in everything that you do. Same to you, Ashu. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in Dubai sometime. I'm sure. The so. last time we saw you with your wife. Remember? Yeah, you yeah, we, were both yeah. we were both there. Yeah. Should be there hopefully in the next uh, month or two months. We are planning something. Good. Let us know. We'll do. We'll do. We'll do. Thanks again. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.